Okay, so we are going to resume with definitions for finite automata, which are essentially descriptions of machines which can recognize regular languages. All right, so finite automata can be expressed using two types of finite automata. One is called deterministic and the other non-deterministic. Now, deterministic finite automata are known as DFAs, that is deterministic finite automata. And non-deterministic finite automata are called NFAs, N standing for non-deterministic. Now, what is the essential definition behind deterministic versus non-deterministic? So, those of you who are not uh, familiar with the notion of a state space, a state space is the set of, is a graph starting from an initial state and has all the states that are possibly reachable from the initial state via transitions. So, for instance, if I label these states A, B, C, D, E, F, these are the names of the states, then the state space for this system is the set of states A, B, C, D, E, F. So, this is what is known as a state space. Alright, so let's look at an actual example. Let's look at a language which is regular. The set of strings W, such that W starts and ends with a name. And W is uh, a word from the language consisting of A's and B's. Alright, that's what this a uh, particular statement actually means that is w belongs to a b and zero more combinations now since w starts and ends with an a you have at least two as the minimum length of the string because it has to start and end with a name it can't be empty so the state space for this is the following you have say q1 Q2, Q3, and Q4. These states are labeled with transitions. The transitions are labeled with um, letters from the alphabet, that is A and B. And the states are labeled as Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. You have transitions taking you from one state to, to a distinctly different state. You have transitions taking you and looping around on the same state. And we have to decide which is a state that is most desirable. Now, in this case, we, the desirable state is one in which the word has started and ended with an A. For instance, if we start in Q1 and the first letter we get is a B, then that is not desirable. So, we go to a state Q4 in which we just loop on A and B and stay in Q4. So, this is the undesirable state. So, these states which are absolutely undesirable are called dead states. Whereas, we need to decide now on states that are desirable. And the state in this case is one in which we have seen an A in the beginning and an A in the end. So, if we get an A in the beginning, we are good to go. We can then get any number of B's, that's fine, because the alphabet contains B. We can also get any number of A's. So, if we get an A, we consider that if we had to end now, we would be happy with just the A at the end. So, we go to Q3. Q3 is a desirable state. A desirable state is called a final state. And we mark it with a double circle. So, Q3 is a final state. And... In Q3, if I get any more A's, again I'm fine because I can have a string which starts with an A, has any number of B's and then has any number of A's. So, for this particular substring, I'm fine. For this particular substring also, I'm fine as long as I have A's at the end. We can go back to Q2 on a B. The reason we go back to Q2 on a B is that had we to stay in Q3 on a B, Q3 could no longer be a final state because in that case we would have a B at the end of the string. So, by forcing that we can stay in Q3 only if the last is an A, 
that is every incoming transition to Q3 is labeled A, we are ensuring that Q3 can be a final state. So there are three types of states, states that are dead, which are undesirable, that is we know at a finite point in time after reading the a part of the string that this string will definitely not be part of the language, we go to an undesirable dead state. However, if we are still unsure of whether the string will be accepted and is part of the language, we stay in a path that could possibly lead you to a final state. Now, as it so happens, this particular finite automata, it is called finite because it has a finite number of states and a finite number of symbols. The state space is finite. For this finite automata, we have every state with one transition leaving the state per letter in the alphabet. From Q1, we have one transition on an A and exactly one transition on a B. For Q4, one transition on an A and one transition on a B. For Q2, the same and for Q3, the same. Therefore, this particular finite automata is deterministic. For every possible location that you can have, you have exactly one move that you can make on reading a particular letter. All right. So now, given this example, let's define what a finite automata will be. So a finite automata M DFA is defined as Q, the set of states, Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, sigma, that is the alphabet, in this case AB, delta, the transition function that tells you if you are in a state and you read a particular letter, which is your next state. Q, 0, which is your initial state, in this case it's Q1 and F, which is a set of final states, in this case the single state Q3. Please remember that Q is a set of states, Sigma is an alphabet, which is a set of letters, and F is a set of final states. Delta is a transition function which we typically write in the form of a table. For example, for this particular DFA, for this particular DFA, we have the transition function as follows. Okay. So, this is the set of states Q and this is my alphabet sigma. A and B are two letters in the alphabet and for each letter we decide where to go from Q1 when we read that letter. So in our DFA from Q1 on an A we went to Q2. So that's what we write here. On a B from Q1 we went to Q4. From Q2 on an A we had gone to Q3 and on a B we remained in Q2. From Q3 on an A, we stayed in Q3 and on a B, we returned to Q2. And Q4 being the dead state, we wanted it to remain in Q4 no matter what. So on an A or on a B, it remains in Q4. So understand that because we do not have any directed arrows, transitions going out of Q4, it is most certain that we will be remaining in Q4 no matter what we receive. Alright, so this is the transition function written as a table. So our initial state here is Q1. Alright. So in this case Q0 is equal to Q1. So from now onwards all our DFAs or NFAs that we draw will start with an initial state of Q0. Alright, so we, we saw how to draw a DFA for a particular language.
and we said that the state space for this particular DFA is Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. Now, typically in Q2, it's possible for me to have read AB. I could be in Q2. Had I read ABB, I would still be in Q2 because I would have gone from Q1 on an A to B to Q2, read a single B, remain in Q2, and read the third B and remain in Q2. However, essentially, the two states are not the same, right? The Q2 in which I am the first time when I read an AB should be different from Q2 when I have read ABB. But this is not the case. The Q2 is the same whether I have read an AB or an ABB. The reason being here, the state Q2 does not represent what I have read already, but it represents it only in a very succinct form. That is, that Q2 is a state in which I am at a distance of 1 from a final state, wherein given that I get an A, I can possibly go to the final state. So these states essentially represent where I am in my state space and where I am relative to my goal. What do I need to, re to reach my goal in a very general manner? So a finite automata essentially remembers only a finite amount of, uh, of data which is pre-decided. So in this case, the finite automata remembers just one thing which state am I in? It doesn't remember that I have last read an A, I have last read a B, it does not remember. All it remembers is that I am now in Q1, I am now in Q2. So, implicitly it is remembering what I have seen so far, but in a very, very succinct, implicit form. And this implicit form you will understand better when you uh, do regular expressions. So regular expressions are expressions that express the language of regular languages in a very, very short manner. So we will see this later. Alright. We now move on to the next topic.